so it's a 2008 Suzuki V-Strom DL1000. Um, doing a throttle body sync. Um, I've already started and ran it up to operating. Um, this is my homemade manometer. Um, and basically, it's just some water with food coloring. Um, I've got a hole through two holes, uh, one small tube that goes down into the fluid. Um, these larger tubes that are just through the through the lid, they're not down into the fluid. And the engine vacuum is going to apply vacuum to each one of these. As vacuum increases in one jar, it will pull fluid from the other jar through this tube. And the idea is to get both front and rear cylinders pulling the same amount of vacuum. Um, and that will mean that your throttle bodies are synchronized. So once you've got things synchronized, the fluid levels will be even. Um, these tubes are hooked to some extension tubes that go to the bottom of the throttle bodies. Uh, the previous owner had already put these extensions on, so they're right here. I've just got to pull a seat off and they're easily accessible. Um, they've already got the brass fittings that are just plugged off normally. Um, I did pull the side panel off. This is the first time I've done the synchronization on this bike. Wasn't sure how tough it was going to be to get to. Um, I don't know with the crash bars if I'd be able to get to it by just removing one of the trim pieces. Uh, some people do have some luck with that. I don't know if I'll be able to with, with the crash bars. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Uh, when you start it up, you want to adjust the idle just high enough where the secondary butterflies aren't uh, being actuated, uh, which is, I think the service manual says 1200 RPM. Uh, mine is up closer to 1400 RPM. If you're not sure, um, there is, I'll, I'll put a picture in here, but there is a, um, another adjustment screw that you can watch, um, and it is controlled by some kind of servo or something to open and close the secondary butterflies. Um, and if you see it moving, your idle isn't set high enough. But I'm going to go ahead and start it up, and I will play with this a little bit just so you can see the fluid level going. But I'm just using a pair of long pliers to get up this screw. Keep it here. One good thing about this setup is if one side vacuum is way out of whack, you're not going to suck fluid into the engine. Uh, some of the other homemade manometers, they will actually suck the fluid into the engine. For this, because the, the vacuum port doesn't go down into the, the water, you'll never get to that point. Alright, so there you can see that they're pretty much even. Um, this thing takes very, very minute adjustments to make this, these levels move. Um, and with a precision tool like this, it's hard to make those minute adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the idle back down. So there you can see, um, there at the end, before I lowered the idle, I don't know how much of my voice was coming over the sound of the bike, but um, the, it, the adjustments on this adjustment screw, very small increments to make these levels move. 
it's hard to gauge how much you're turning that screw. Um, you could, uh, if you wanted to take the fuel tank off and get in there and actually use a screwdriver. Um, there are some specialty carburetor tools that have a 90 degree end on it, a um, little angle drive that would fit in there and would make it really easy to do this. But um, being cheap and using what I had, um, this will get the job done. Um, seems like it smoothed it out. And I look forward to getting out and riding it and seeing if I notice an improvement. Um, I think that's all I got. I'm going to button it all up, put everything back together, and I still need to change the oil. Um, but that should be it. Thanks for watching.